In this video, I will explain how to use the Libmanian device. The Libmanian device is a tool which sits on top of search engines such as Google. It allows you to batch query search engines and retrieve the results as a spreadsheet or tag cloud. The Libmanian device can only be used in Firefox and you will need to install the DMI toolbar. The toolbar will make requests to various search engines via your browser and the results are then sent to the DMI server for further analysis. It is thus important to make sure that you use the Libmanian device in a research browser and have followed the instructions on setting up a research account. These are both topics of other videos linked in the description below. Let us start by installing the toolbar. Go to tools.digitalmethods.net slash beta slash Libmanian device. Click the yellow info box. Click the DMI Firefox extension. Allow add and OK. Now if you go back to the Libmanian device you can see that the DMI toolbar is installed and waiting for requests at the bottom. It mentions that it is currently inactive as we are not doing any scrapes yet. Now make sure to allow pop-ups from tools.digitalmethods.net. Go to preferences, privacy and security, scroll down until you see Block pop-up windows, click exceptions and add tools.digitalmethods.net. Make sure to have the HTTPS version. Click allow and save changes. You need to allow pop-ups from tools.digitalmethods.net, not so that we can spam you, but because search engines generally do not like the automated retrieval of their result pages and will sometimes ask to confirm that you are human by presenting you a captcha. This CAPTCHA will be presented as a pop-up, but we'll see more about this later. Now we can close the preferences window and go to the Libmanian device. The Libmanian device presents you with two big input fields for which the tool will do requests on your behalf. The first field allows you to input URLs and the second allows you to input queries. In this example we will ask Google to tell us how many pages on greenpeace.org and panda.org mention a set of keywords. In the first field we thus put greenpeace.org and panda.org. URLs entered in this input box should always start with HTTP, HTTPS or www. Note the little checkbox which says only query discrete sites. This checkbox is enabled by default and when you input deep links it will automatically shorten the URLs to their host names. In the current example we entered host names so nothing is changed. If however you want to query individual URLs for the presence of a term you will need to uncheck this box. The next option allows you to specify whether the tools should generate tag clouds. As we do not only want the list of Google results, but also the subsequent analysis, we'll keep the default settings to generate tag clouds. In the second input field, the one which says enter keywords one per line, we will enter a series of queries. Let us start with the query forest. To make sure that Google will return pages with that specific term, I have put the query in quotation marks. If I would not do that, Google might offer pages which only contain synonyms. For example, it might return results for the query Woods 2. Let me add another query. Each new query request to Google should be put on a new line. I will ask Google for pages mentioning climate change or global warming. Here I have made use of a more advanced query. It is still one query request to Google, but will return pages containing either of those terms. For more information about query formulation, refer to uh, the link point to above. Our wiki lists various query considerations for various search engines. Having defined our URLs and queries, we're almost ready to retrieve results from Google. First, we'll have to set the number of results we'd like to retrieve from Google. Keeping this at the default, of 100 is almost always the best option, as search engines generally allow for a maximum of 100 results per request to be returned. 
Note also that search engines will never give you more than 1000 results for a single query, although they may have many more. If you increase this number, you'll thus have to do more queries to the search engine and are more likely to be blocked or to uh, have to fill in a lot of captchas. Next, we'll have to name our result file so that we can recognize it later. I will call it forest and global warming. As you can see, there are many different search engines that be, can be queried this way. Currently, we have Yandex, Google, Bing, Yahoo, uh, Japan, Naver, Baidu, and DuckDuckGo. Each of these engines can be batch queried through the search engine scraper or the Libmanian device and can produce data in both tabular form and tag clouds. For this example, we'll select Google, after which we can specify a set of advanced options specific to the Google search engine or any engine we uh, have selected. Clicking the advanced options shows you the same options you would get when clicking advanced options on a Google search page. Note that by default, google.com is searched, but that you can specify any of the local domain Googles here. Depending on your research needs, you might need to adjust these settings. We'll keep the default settings and start the scrape by clicking Scrape Search Results. Right now, the tool is querying Google. The DMI toolbar at the bottom of the screen will show some activity. And in the process log, you can see which query the tool is doing. Right now, it's querying forest inside greenpeace.org. You can see that the Libmanian device retrieved 98 results from Google, but that Google indicated there is a total of 16,100. As the first result page didn't uh, return 100 results, the second page is queried so that the next two results are found as well. Continuing, we can see that the tool is querying climate change or global warming in greenpeace.org and forest in panda.org. Thereafter, climate change or global warming is queried in panda.org. And to ensure that you get all results, do not close your browser window or laptop before the scraper indicated that it is done. Once the queries are done, the tool will start analyzing the results and create a variety of tag clouds. We will return to this in a second. Let us first take a look at the raw results. If we go to the output menu at the top, we can select whether we want to see the results in CSV, text, or as a tag cloud. Let us select CSV, which is a file in tabular format and can be opened in a spreadsheet program. The fields in the CSV file are separated by a tab, so that's what we need to specify. Et voilà, here are the 100 results for forestsitegreenpeace.org, 100 results for climate change or global warming in greenpeace.org, and the same uh, for panda.org, forest and climate change. The spreadsheet lists the result number, the search engine which was queried, the actual query, the article title, the article URL, the article description of each result, the total number of results as indicated by uh, the search engine, in this case Google, for this specific query. Uh, if a page has a date attached, the date will be here and there will be a file type uh, if it's recognized. And there will be a timestamp. And a timestamp is basically uh, the date, if it's recognized, converted to Unix time. The number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970. Let us quickly compare this uh, with what we queried on Google. So if we uh, scroll back up in the process log and we click the URL, in this case we are uh, returned or treated with a CAPTCHA. Uh, we need to indicate that we're not a robot to see the Google results.
Now, it's important to close the tab after you filled in a CAPTCHA. And it's important when uh, running a scrape, uh, because then the toolbar will know that the CAPTCHA is filled in and that it can return or retry uh, to query the page and retrieve the results. Uh, in this specific case, as we are just inspecting the results, it wasn't uh, that necessary. So if we compare the results um, for our query, forest inside greenpeace.org, with the, uh, what's returned, we um, immediately see that we only have uh, scraped the so-called organic results. So no images have been parsed into the spreadsheet, nor have ads or query suggestions or news or videos or whatever. The Google scraper, the Libmanian device, and all the other search engine scrapers only store the so-called organic results. So uh, the first one uh, coincides with the first result here. So protecting forest dash Greenpeace with this specific URL, USA forests. Uh, then there's forest destruction, take action, forest, Greenpeace International, etc. Returning to the tag clouds, we can see a number of checkboxes. Uh, which are grouped uh, by two types of tag clouds. So the first one is keywords per site, also uh, called issues per source, and the other is sites per keywords, also called sources per issues. And then we have some ordering and some uh, output options. So the first one, uh, keywords per site, or issues per source, uh, lists tag clouds for each site or source, as well as a cumulative uh, cloud. So we can see that on greenpeace.org we found uh, or we retrieved 100 results for the query forest, 100 results for, for the cl query climate change or global warming, and the same on panda.org. Now if we look at uh, the number of results indicated by Google, we can see that forest was re uh, found on 16,100 pages on greenpeace.org, while climate change or global warming were found on 26,200 pages on Greenpeace.org. On panda.org, however, forest was, re, uh, was found 17,300 times and climate change or global warming seemed less prominent. We can also look at this another way, uh, namely by size per keyword. Again, first we have a cumulative cloud and then we have two, uh, clouds for each keyword. So for forest, um, we have 100 pages on greenpeace.org and 100 pages on panda.org and for the other query the same. If we now look at uh, how much Google indicates that it uh, has in total, we can see that greenpeace.org um, holds 16,100 pages for forest and panda.org 17,300 pages. So for panda.org, forest is more important than for greenpeace.org. Whilst if we look at climate change or global warming, we can see that greenpeace.org um, gives much more prominence to the issue than panda.org. 